Good morning. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to another beautiful day here in Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan and uh, yeah, I've got an awesome flight for you guys planned out today. Going through some nice valleys and gorges and stuff and some really, really beautiful parts of Papua New Guinea. So let's go ahead and get started and get on our way. All right, I'm going to make sure all my switches are in the positions they want. I've already checked uh, my air breakers. Fuel is on. Ignition on. Fuel pump on. And we will start. NG is over 14% and stable. Introduce my fuel. I'll watch my ITT once it starts coming up. And also looking at my NG to see if it's continuing on past 35. There it goes. ITT is coming up. And it's stabilizing at 565 and coming back down. So start is done. Ignition off. Fuel pump back to standby. And have them disconnect the start cart. And put the prop forward. Takes about 30 seconds or so to come out of feather. A generator on, alternator on, and aux bus on, and our V2 tracker. That allows our home base to be able to track us on the computer. And we can also send them text messages. You can get a hold of us as well. Lower is going because it's already warm in here. It's only 68 degrees in here, but it feels warm with that sun. All right, we've got a thousand pounds of fuel on board. And my loading is 700 and <laughs> 748 kgs. All right, 1,000 pounds. Payload is 748, and we have minus 76 kgs of equipment because we only have three seats underneath. And we also have a little bit of extra weight with the wood for all we're carrying uh, fuel drums today. So I've got about 30 kgs available, so we're pretty much full up. 71.87 on the weight. So my cargo and passengers is 15.30. Oh, I can come down here, look down here at 7,200 pounds, take off 63 knots, landing 75. Put that up here, so 75 knots on my V-Ref and 63 knots on my rotate. We'll be going out at 1,000 feet today. Kroger Tower, good morning, November Tango Echo. Request taxi, E1 POB. From Tango Echo, Grutel, morning crew, Ryan. Taxi to run a one, some left bent in backtrack, can line up. Would like in vivo, can I want your one nana? Temperature one eight, and time uh, three three. One zero one nine, clear to backtrack, line up one seven left, November Tango Echo, and good morning. All right, as I come on to the runway, I'm going to go ahead and throw my strobe on. My landing light is on and my pulse light is already on. Clear left and clear right. As we come on, we're going to do our overspeed governor check. And just making sure our governor is working, basically. All right, looks great. All right, if we're not 50 knots by this taxiway right here, or if we have to stop for any other reason, maybe birds or something, we're going to do full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, cut off, pull off, shut off if we're going off. After takeoff, we're going to pitch for 85, consider EPL, consider feather. 85 initially, 80 knots, full flaps. Emergencies, call the tower, brace, and crack our door close to the ground, and master's off close to the ground. All right, let's go ahead and go through our checklist. First thing is fuel caps and selectors. I already checked the fuel caps before I got in. Selectors are turned on. Poles are good. We'll just leave our TAWS enabled right now. Switches and instruments. Instruments are already set up. Our T's and P's are all in the green. Temperatures and pressures. Caps are set at 20. Indicating 20 and also verified at 20. Trim is set up. Already talked about abort. Inlet and lights done. November Tango Echo, ready for takeoff. November Tango Echo, one seven left, make right turn, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, one seven left, right turn, November Tango Echo. All right, ignition condition, flaps 20 and fuel on harnesses, and cleared for takeoff. 20 degrees, so today the um, takeoff torque is going to be 1390 for 1440, rotate 63. There's 1390, our speed is alive. We are super heavy today. 
looking for 63. There's 63 and rotate. I have my ITT at 740 now. Um, and we're just going to keep it right at 740 until we're at least usually around 1,000 feet. We'll go ahead and bring our prop back, and which will also bring the torque back on its own. So on climb out, you can see I'm keeping this little yellow arrow right here, right around the seven and a half degree mark, and that's going to give me right around 85 knots. That's what I like to climb out at. It gives you a nice pitch where it's not too steep, especially for passengers and stuff. And then once we get up a little bit higher up, then we'll nose over a bit and start increasing our speed and get our flaps out. Over 85 knots, we can go ahead and reduce our flaps to 10 degrees. Go ahead and start making my right hand turn out here. Then over 90 knots and also increasing, we'll go ahead and go zero flaps. So it looks like yet another beautiful day and the weather forecast is saying it's gonna be awesome out today. So I have about an hour and 10 minute flight out to where I'm going right now. And bring our prop back. 2000 RPM. And if it's at 740 and I bring it back to 2000 RPM, my ITT will drop right down to right at 720 or within just a couple of degrees Celsius of 720. So now that we're climbing out and we'll be able to clear these clouds as well as the mountains in front of us, uh, it came out at 725. We'll just write our departure time down, time at 3 8. Our next reporting point is in 23 minutes, so it'll be one after the hour. So it's 8.40 or 8.38 now. So let's go ahead and finish cleaning up. Lightning light off, bypass the normal ignition off. And it'll turn our pulse light off as well. Rocket Tower, November Tango Echo, departed time 38, tracking 284, on climb not above 1, 2000. That's meeting overhead, Grumbin time 01. I'm doing a corner about 12,000. Contact Marang on primary VHF 120 decimal 1, second HF 6538 of the water bottle. And the water bottle, contact Marang 120 decimal 1 or 6538. So on this flight, uh, like I said, it's about an hour and 10 minute flight, something like that. And so stay tuned to the end because once we get close to where we're actually going, there's some really pretty valleys and kind of almost gorges that we're going to go fly down to get down into where we actually want to go. And they're really, really tight and they're really just, I mean, like just crazy, crazy steep. So I think you guys will enjoy that. So make sure you stay tuned to the so you don't miss out on that. So typically on climb out, I climb out at 100 knots with the Kodiak. I know a lot of you guys are flying the simulator and you guys would like some numbers to go off of. So I'm going to give you some of these numbers that I do. Like I said, when I do take off, actually I climb out at 85 knots, um, unless you're trying to get over terrain, which is 73 knots with the 20 degrees of flaps. But then you can lower the nose once you get past trees or terrain or whatever it is. Then I climb out at 85 knots, start cleaning up my flaps. And then on the rest of the climb out, I climb out at 100 knots. The reason that it's 100 is because the autopilot, the minimum speed you can use the autopilot is 100 knots. And the best rate of climb is 99 knots. It goes down with, every, with altitude, it actually goes down one knot per 2,000 feet. And I'm not 100% sure exactly where that that one knot ends, but um, I'm thinking it's probably around 85 knots, but usually I just keep it at 99 knots if I actually are down to maybe maximum like 95 knots um, at the slowest for my climb outs, but I like to keep it around 100. It's a nice pitch angle. If you want to just do a cruise climb, our cruise climbs in the Kodiak are 115 knots, and that's just even a less pitch attitude. If you do have passengers, it just makes it just a little bit more comfortable for them. We're just now passing through the Waterbung, which is a gap just close by Garoka. If you're interested in flying the same route on your flight simulator, um, down in my Patreon page, I'll leave a link down below or in the about section of this. I put flights on um, my Patreon page so you guys can actually fly the same routes that I'm flying and experience kind of from home what it's, what it's like to fly here in Papua New Guinea. 
We're just passing 900,000 on climb 12,000. Let's go ahead and call it Madang. Madang, 120.1, November Tango Echo Transfer. November Tango, Madang, good morning, go ahead. Good morning, November Tango Echo, through the water bung, passing 900,000 on climb 12,000. Estimating overhead, you're up in time, 01. November Tango, Richard Madang, no traffic reported, Eric Unich, 1009. 1009 November Tango Echo. All right, now that I'm over out of the valley and out of any terrain or things, I'm going to go ahead and flip on my autopilot. I like flying by hand most of the time just because I like flying and don't like just pushing the buttons to get it going. But um, yeah, for longer flights, I've got about three hours of flying today, which isn't a ton, but uh, three stops. So I'm going out to one place, random bush location to drop off this fuel that I have behind me of four drums that I am taking out to a bush location that's close by another area where we have some missionaries that's a, that's a helicopter location. So the helicopter left probably about 20 minutes before me and he's going to pick them up and then bring him over and then we're just dropping this fuel off as a positioning area so that we can fuel a helicopter out in the middle of nowhere. So once I pick up them, then I'm heading on to WeWAC, dropping them off. They're heading back to their home country, and then I'm flying back from WeWAC back to Goroka. So I should probably be back, I'm guessing, maybe a little afternoon, maybe 1 o'clock or so. So I'm just going out early just so I can hang out with the guys that live out uh, where we're going. All right, one, two, zero, decimal five is going to be my next frequency. That's going to be Mount Hagen Tower. So. Once I get to my next reporting point, Jerumbin, just about ready to go into Mount Hawkins airspace, and that's where I'm going to let him know where I am. I speak with him for about five minutes, and he just transfers me right back to Madang on a different frequency. All right, now that we are leveling off at 12,000 feet, I'm going to wait till my speed increases up to 130 knots indicated, and then I'm going to go ahead and start making my power changes and bring my torque back to 1,250 foot-pound of torque. That's going to be our cruise, and as long as my ITT is below 700, then that's good. So the higher you climb, your torque is going to continue to drop off, and your ITT is going to stay higher. So the higher we go, our torque is going to be lower, and our ITT will be limited to just 700. That's also on my leveling off. The speed is increasing, so you can think of it two ways. I'm taking right rudder pressure out or I'm putting left rudder pressure in, but basically I'm just, I already had full right rudder. I'm um, actually just a little bit off to the right on my right rudder. Basically just taking a little bit of that out as my speed is increasing. I just don't have as, quite as many of those P factor working on the airplane, pulling the airplane to the left. So I'm just approaching 130 knots indicated. So over here on my torque, I'm just going to go ahead and bring my power lever, which is this lever here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to 1,250 foot-pound of torque. And as you can see, we're at 12,000 feet, and the ITT is just under 700. So that's what we're looking for, and we're going to just bump our prop RPM back down to 2,000. And that's what I'm looking for. So 1,250 at the top, and 2,000 RPM on my MP. Just the prop. November 10, Kumarang Girambin, Kunek Hagen Tower 1205. 1205, Girambin, November 10, go echo. Right, our first reporting point is Girambin. It's about 15 to 18 miles from Hagen, actually, you can hit nearest. It is, yeah, 16 nautical miles from Mount Hagen, which is just right over there, underneath all those clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and give up tower call, let them know where I am as we pass through their airspace. Hagen Tower, Kodiak November, Tango Echo. Number Tango Echo, Hagen Tower, good morning, go ahead. Good morning, November Tango Echo, Jerome at this time, maintaining 12,000, estimating north of beam 03 and fire gap 06. Number Tango Echo, Hagen QNH 1020. Cloud base broken, 5,000. Visibility OK in low line clouds. Traffic Michael for Kilo Cessna Caravan departed Hagen for call, not out 9,000. Should be Kimil Gap this time. Call again, not Abim Hagen. 
All good, north of Beam, copy Mike, Alpha, Quebec, November, Tango, Echo. North Hello, Robert Tango, Echo, this is Mike of Kilo, we are just uh, underneath you, separation of 3000, should be no conflict, have a wonderful day. Sounds good, and uh, just passenger up in 1-2000, have a good one, November, Tango, Echo. That is an MAF plane out of Mount Hagen. Anyways, like I was saying, I'm not sure why we have to report north of Beam, so basically about 9 or 10 miles north of the field, they have us report regardless of if there's any traffic or not, even though, I guess it just lets them know once we're halfway through their airspace, even though I report to them again once I leave their airspace, so, I don't know, something that we do here. Anyways, man, it is such a really beautiful day out. I just can't get over how clear it is today. I love this time of the year, basically from May all the way till October, November, or so the skies are just so blue and just, Afternoons, the storms still build up, but it's so much bluer during the day. Or rainy season is just cloudy all the time. Okay, Tower November, Tango Echo, north of beam this time, 12000, fire 06. Number Tango Echo traffic, number Tango Hotel, company Belkov, bus stopping weapon Amanda 57, if key, estimate 42. Maintaining one two thousand. Contact Marion one two eight five. No contact six five three eight. Bye again. Copy company traffic and uh, say again first frequency for Medang. Number Tango Echo. Number Tango Echo. Contact Marion one two eight five. No contact six five three eight. Bye again. One two eight five or six five three eight. Bye again. Thank you. Number Tango Echo. Right. I already had that in, but I just didn't catch it, and I wanted to make sure that I actually remembered the frequency correctly. Anyways, yeah, like I was saying, we have our helicopter that's going to be actually getting there. Actually, a few minutes after me, I'm going to be getting there at 9.35. He's getting there at 9.42. And I think he's going actually over to a different place to pick up some people and then back to where we're going. So, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and try to get him up a company. November Tango Hotel, November Tango Echo Company. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, my ATA is 9.36. I hear you're 4-2. Uh, I should be over there about a uh, quarter after 10.15 or so. All right, I, I figured that as much, so okay, I'll see you then. All right, sounds good. That will be nice because he's not going to be getting to where we're going till about 10.15. So I have about a half hour on the ground before my passengers will arrive. And I'll make a quick little video for you guys. I put other videos on my Patreon page, like on the ground stuff, showing you around where we actually land, what the airship looked like. You know, what it just looks like, the houses around there, that kind of stuff. Do some drone shots. So if you're interested in seeing more content like that, um, yeah, like I said, just click on the link um, in my abouts my about channel page or whatever it's called. All right, we're just now crossing over Buyer Gap. Go call up Madang. Madang, one two eight decimal five November Tango Echo transfer. November Tango Echo. Good morning again. Go ahead. November Tango Echo Buyer Gap. This time one two thousand estimating three six copy company November Tango Hotel. Tango Echo 1, 2000, no additional traffic reported. November, Tango Echo. All right, I am 45 miles out, and we're going to be getting there in about 13 and a half minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and brief you guys on where we're actually going and what to expect once we get there. So just bringing up our strip chart, the elevation is 3,250, so I'm going to go ahead and put in 1,000 foot above. So I'm going to go 4,200 feet. Myself coordinated as I'm going down, wasn't paying attention. Uh, the runway is runway 11. But right now I'm on just heading mode. I'll get that set up in just a minute. Our OBS, actually I can put our OBS at runway 11. And what that does is it draws a line, big huge line, and that basically just shows me my runway. So as I get into the, the patterns, a smaller valley, uh, not small valley, it's a small valley, and 
Anytime I want to look, if I'm not familiar exactly where the runway is, I can just look there and see where the screen, where the line is, and that's what I'm parallel with the runway or not. So it's a 7% slope, and it is 30 meters wide, a right-hand pattern. And we are coming in today. Let's see, go over to our ox page. We're at 6,940 pounds now. We'll go 100 pounds less than that because we'll burn off about that by the time we land. So we'll be landing around 6,800 pounds. So our landing weight, our landing speed is going to be 72 knots. So on our timer reference, I'm going to go turn my VREF to 72 knots. That's just a nice reminder. And trying to get all my stuff done before we get down here in the valley as we're going to be flying down low through this. We don't have to, but I wanted to show you because it's a really awesome valley. So I'm going to check my selectors and my brakes. My taw is going to turn Betty off so that she's not yelling at us because she'll yell at us the whole time that we're low. I've already got my V-Ref set up. Ending light and pulse lights. Again, I'm just getting everything set up so that I don't have to be worrying about this when I am to the ground, close to terrain. I can get everything. So I will talk about our um, abort procedure once we get in the valley. Prop and harness, we'll get prop in a minute. We'll do harness now and flaps later. What we are going to do here is we're going to be coming up this light spot right here around the valley. So normally we could just go straight, but we have to have a pretty steep down in. But um, for this, what we're going to do is just go around on that little light spot, and that's going to basically get us down through the valley, and it's really cool. A little flight. All right, autopilot off. So it does look like there's some clouds up there on all the ridges, so we'll see how congested it is in the actual valley. But I'm imagining that Usually the valleys are kind of spread open and all the clouds are just on top. Kilo 50 and 16 for 0 5. We'll be easy to the road, careful. A lot of these mountains right here, they're all, I mean, I'm at 8,800 and they're clearly taller than me. Uh, those ones over there and these ones up and ahead of me are right around 13,000 feet. And just absolutely crazy rugged how steep some of these mountains are out here. I guarantee you no one's ever been out here on a lot of these because they're just so, so steep. We're about seven minutes out now, about 22 miles yet to run. And uh, this is right where the valley starts getting a little bit closer and closer. Once we get maybe just within like five or six miles or so, it gets really skinny. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start getting down. It's bright enough. It looks like the, the clouds and everything are clear enough for us to be able to go down there and, and enjoy the flight going in. This is just another route that we can also take in. If the weather is bad and there's, oh, I'm at 6,700 right now. So, I mean, if it is like an overcast, this is also another way that we can get in uh, where we want to go at a nice low route. So anytime I am doing any like low level flying as far as in valleys or tight confined spaces, I always like to go off one side where I can see down the valley. So the valley comes in and turns this way. So I'm going to go hug this side so I can just see as far as I can down there just to see what the weather is around the corner. And just because this is, once I'm in this, there is no way I can actually turn around because it's only probably, it's some some areas, I mean, it's only like a half a mile wide. But I can see up around as far as I want, and the weather looks great up there, so. Get a little bit more altitude, so I can, there we go. Feel a little bit more comfortable. Down here at the bottom, down here at the bottom, it gets really, really, really skinny. What I'm doing is I'm just hugging this side right here because this is my easiest escape route. If, if, I mean, it's beautiful weather today, but if I had to go around, I'd want to be on one side so that I can actually turn all the way around. But I can see all the way up through there now. And there's no low lining clouds in there, but man, it's just really awesome here. Just crazy, crazy steep. Way a couple thousand feet above me on either side. More than likely, there's probably waterfalls coming off of both sides as well. 
Like right here off to the left, we got like sheer cliffs that are just incredible. Oh, just absolutely beautiful here. Never gets boring flying, that's for sure. I'm pretty much at pattern altitude right now, so I'm just going to hold my altitude because I'm just basically going to be going around this next corner and into another valley, and that's where my circuit will be. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and put our inertial separator in a bypass. We are low, so just in case there are any birds flying at this altitude, I don't want to be sucking any in it. my engine. 500. Go ahead and flip our selectors on. Engine and our lights and inlet are done. Do prop here in a minute. All right, so I'm going to fly over top of the field. That gives me an opportunity to look down, make sure that there aren't any any animals or people on the runway, and it also alerts them to let them know that I'm here. And uh, there's a guy here that his job is to make sure that there's no dogs on the runway. There's a fence, but sometimes they still get in. So he goes out there with his stick or his spear and throws it at the dogs and scares them off or kills them or whatever, I don't know. Um, but he does his job well. All right, slowing down, 10 degrees of flaps. And we're slowing down to 92 knots. I'm going to bring my torque around probably 800 usually. 800 foot pound of torque and 10 degrees of flaps. And the runway is good and dry. So 800 foot pound of torque, 10 degrees of flaps is probably going to give you around 100 to 110 knots, roughly. So I've got it right now at 640. I'm going to bring it down to 600. I can slow down to 92 knots. I saw some birds right up here in these trees. I'm going to go any low until I get past those. 500. So I'm at 4,400 right now, a little bit above where I actually want to be. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and bring my torque to around 400 foot-pound of torque. That's going to give me usually 350 to 450 is, depending on your weight, is going to be what you want for your approach and the Kodiak. Unless you're trying to slow down, which I am, so I'm still at 100 knots. So I'm going to bring it back to 250 foot-pound of torque to slow down. I'm going to be turning 3850 base, slowing down, 20 degrees of flaps, 3650 turning final, and we want 82 uh, knots on the base. Alright, flaps to go, and then checklist is complete. There's our 3800 turning base, 182 knots. 500. A little bit low, I'm already at 3650, so I'm going to my altitude right here, because this is the altitude I want to be turning final. Getting over to this hill. 500. Flaps checklist is complete. Turning final, looking for 72 knots. Four knots on the tail. Slowing down to 72 knots. 600 foot per minute descent. We're looking for 550. 500. There's our 72 knots. Gonna match the slope before we reduce our power. Don't smack the ground. We are committed. There's 500 feet on the descent, there's 73 knots. Touch the slope, reduce, and touch down, and then reverse. A bit undulating. Once we get down to a slow speed, we'll do a low idle. Flaps back to 20 to get it ready for our next takeoff, as well as getting my trim set up. I have a helicopter coming in here in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and park at the top. That way I can get all these fuel drums off and uh, pushed over where they need to go. If you enjoyed that landing and thought that approach is pretty cool or that valley is pretty cool, give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel grow. 
So if you're wanting to help this channel grow and uh, feel free to share these videos with your other aviation enthusiast friends and uh, leave a comment down below on what you thought of that landing, if you liked it or if you thought it sucked. Thank you for taking the time to watch and have a great day. I'm gonna get my numbers, my fuel, I'm landed with 640 pounds. All right, for shutdown, we're gonna go ahead and turn that off, turn our lights off, aux fuel, aux bus, generator, alternator, below 585 on the ITT. I didn't cut off and below 38%, feather it. Fuel's already off in the top, so we're not transferring the fuel down below. And that's that. If you guys want to be interested in seeing a video on the ground here, I'm going to shoot one really quick, so head over to my Patreon page if you want to see some more on the ground stuff.